If you happen to head on to Shopee or Lazada to search for a cheap Android tablet, you might actually stumble upon a lot of cheap Chinese Android tablets such as this one. This is the Teclas P20 HD, which by all means has a very impressive specs on paper. First of all, it has a 10.1 inch display with a full HD resolution. It is powered by an unnamed octa-core processor, which is not mentioned on the product spec sheet. By the way, it's a Unisoc processor and it has 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. So I've been using this for about a month already and even though everything is pretty impressive on paper, but I have some thoughts about it and why you shouldn't be considering this tablet if you're thinking to just buy an entry-level tablet for work and play. So on first impressions, such tablets are usually very attractive when it comes to their design. Look at this thing. Even though it's not exactly metal, it's a plastic chassis by the way, but Teclas has in fact used a brushed aluminum finishing on the back that makes it look a lot premium than any other cheap Huawei or Samsung tablets you can find in the market. But how they make it so cheap is that they are actually recycling an old design of a previous tablet, which I assume this is actually a standard design of some old Samsung tablet back then, and they actually recycled the use of this tablet chassis and built it as their own tablet. As you can see, this squarish camera bump right over here, it's a pretty dated design, but it works. It still looks good as compared to some plastic chassis out there. Now, the number one thing that you should avoid buying such kind of tablets is that they usually come with a really inferior SoC inside. Now by all means, the SoC that powers this tablet is not entirely bad. It's a Unisoc T610 octa-core SoC and when you hear an octa-core SoC, it should be performing really well in everyday usage, which by all means it is. It does perform well. It launches apps uh, in a pretty decent speed. It's not snappy fast, but it's decent enough. The problem about this SoC is that it's not really a powerful SoC as well because what it lacks is graphics power. So if you happen to scroll through like a Facebook feed or even play some entry-level games such as Candy Crush and so on, you will notice a very obvious lag which is as bad as an entry-level chipset on a smartphone four or five years ago. So this is one thing that you might not find it pleasant when you buy a tablet like this and if you're someone that wants a decent performance out of this for long term, well, this is why you should avoid getting a tablet like this. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is their displays. Even though this tablet has a pretty impressive resolution at full HD, which is not possible on entry-level tablets, but once you actually take it out of the box and start viewing some videos, you'll find out why it is so cheap. Because this is a really cheap panel that Tech Class has used on this device. It has very washed out colors as you can see and secondly it has a very poor touch reporting rate which means multi-touch performance isn't really good and if you were to type really fast on this tablet it's totally not possible at all so yep you get what you paid for this is a cheap tablet and even though it sounds really good on paper it isn't exactly great when you view it in person like I mentioned earlier, the display of this tablet isn't exactly great. It's still viewable, but there's one more thing that I would like to bring it up to you guys on why you shouldn't be buying such tablets, and that is sound quality. Now, this tablet has dual speakers, which by all means is still impressive. It sounds decent for an entry-level tablet, but the problem here is its headphone output. Because of the poor choice of SoC and the deck that this tablet uses, in order to make it affordable, the headphone output is pretty much compromised. The sound quality out of this jack is very poor. It sounds worse than a 5-6 year old smartphone. It has no bass at all. It has very tiny audio. Even when you pair it to a pair of Bluetooth headphones, the connection is just not reliable enough. So yes, the headphone output is so bad that I totally wouldn't use it at all. And it is something that you should avoid using it as a media consumption device if you are planning to get one. Now, last but not least, it would be future software support and hardware warranty. Now, let's talk about software first. So, such tablets are usually very affordable and the manufacturers wouldn't usually want to spend that extra cost to pay Google for signing off future Android software releases. So, when you buy this tablet, you are very much stuck with what it is preloaded. Now, for instance, this tablet comes preloaded with Android 10 and by all means, it's pretty clean. There's no bloatware pre-installed. 
But the thing is that it is not using the standard uh, system update that you're used to on phones. It uses Teclas very own OTA update, which means all OS releases or even some security updates, it is released directly from Teclas. So you're not getting a security update directly from Google and so on. So if Teclas decides that it is time to end the support, which they may actually do so, or they may not support this in the very long term, you know, you're pretty much stuck with what you get on this tablet. And when we talk about hardware support, let's say such kind of tablets break. You don't usually have a local service center that has parts replacements and so on. You will have to usually send this all the way back to China where you have to pay a fee usually, and you could have potentially wait for months before getting your device replaced. When you pay for a cheap price for a tablet, there are such kind of consequences to face. So there you have it. These are some of my thoughts on owning a cheap, affordable Android tablets just like this. Definitely when it comes to the hardware perspective and usability, it's worth it. It's less than 500 ringgit and you get a lot of things uh, on this tablet. You even get 4G LT on this thing and it supports phone calls as well, which is a steal for someone who just wants an Android tablet to be their office phone or whatever. But some of the inconveniences that this tablet offers is definitely not worth the price. I would rather that you actually spend an extra one to hundred ringgit and get a branded and a locally supported tablet if you actually want to, because these kind of tablets are definitely not worth it when you consider that the disadvantages I mentioned earlier. So that's all for my video for today. Uh, this armor talks about such kind of cheap Android tablets and why you should totally avoid it. And that's pretty much about it. Thanks for watching. So stay tuned for more videos coming right up on KL Gadget TV and be sure to follow us on the usual social media places. And I will see you in our next video.